Welcome to the Sports Council. I think the biggest thing is March doesn't care. March does not care what we did in January or February. And so remembering that, um, we're preparing right now. The council is now in session. With a personality shaped by being an athlete and a background in mainstream sports media, I found that the stories I was most interested in telling were the ones often overlooked, the ones that might not otherwise be told, the ones that show the intangible and not just the highlight reel. The Sports Council is about highlighting the great, the good, the unique, and everything in between in the Pacific Northwest sports world. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, the Tri-Cities leader in sports. Welcome to the Sports Council. I'm Jamie Council. It's March, which means it's time for basketball tournaments, including in the Tri-Cities. For the second year in a row, Columbia Basin College in Pasco is holding the Northwest Athletic Conference Championships. The top four seeds from each of the four regions face each other in the Sweet 16 and Elite 8, running Wednesday through Sunday and the semis and championships next Saturday and Sunday. One team that's hoping to be there are the Columbia Basin Hawks women's program. They went 14-0 in conference play and are 23-2 overall. They come into the tournament as the number one seed from the East. Today, we catch up with head coach for the Hawks, Amy Sakaitis. Amy Sakaitis, I'm the head women's basketball coach at Columbia Basin College. So regular season is in the books and you guys went undefeated in conference play. Um, how are you feeling? Uh, you know, we had a really good conference run and so that, that made you feel good. We had a couple of you know, ups and downs in that time at January and February are very long months in terms of basketball, but I feel like we took some time off and we feel pretty fresh right now. So excited to go into the tournament. So we'll talk more about the tournament, which is in Pasco, which is great to have home court advantage. We'll get into that. But first, let's talk a little bit about you as a coach from Alaska, but also ties to Washington. So tell me about your journey that led you to being the head women's basketball coach at Columbia Basin College. Yeah, so I've been, this is my 15th year as a college coach. It's my eighth year as a head coach, I think. I think that's great. Maybe 10th year, actually. And if you need me to hold your mic and you can I, count your fingers. I know. I, know. I have to think about that. I'm like, it's been a minute. Um, but I, you know, my dad was a college coach my whole life. And so when I was first born, he was coaching at Olympia High School. And then from there, I went to UW. And that kind of took us all over the country. We lived in Massachusetts, uh, Maine, Alaska, Colorado for college. Uh, so I started coaching right out of college at Yale University. And I went from there to the next job in Connecticut and as a head coach in Pennsylvania. And I always knew I wanted to coach at the junior college level. I think you get players that just keep wanting to get better. Uh, I think at the four years, sometimes you get I have arrived syndrome and, and there's not that drive to continue to grow and develop your game. Um, so I was really looking for a junior college job and this opened up and unbeknownst to me, this beautiful building opened up too, but uh, I took the job sight unseen and was happy to move back to Washington. Yeah, so you grew up with very deep Washington ties. Not that many people around here know that about you. No, it, the basketball world does. It doesn't. I don't go anywhere where someone doesn't go, are you Al's daughter? Uh, <laughs> at every single game, it's to the point that my staff and I just laugh about it. Um, but no, I need a shirt that says, yes, yeah, I'm yes, daughter. Yes, I am. I'm that kid. Uh, but no, it, it's, I'm like, Did you, do you like him? Is he a nice guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but honestly, it, it's great to be back here, um, you know, Yes, not, not a ton of Washington ties for me growing up. I mean, I was only here for a few months, but growing up in Fairbanks, Alaska, you are in Washington a lot. I spent a lot of time playing travel ball here, uh, know the area a bit, and so it was really fun to, to be back in the area. And uh, why basketball for you? It runs in your genes, but obviously you have your own story, your own motivation. What is that for you? It's interesting. Both of my brothers played in high school and neither had any desire to play in college. and. 
I wanted to play in college, but I was seven when I said I wanted to coach. Um, the first time I said that to a friend's mom, I said, what are you gonna do when you grow up? I said, I wanna be a basketball coach. Uh, and I haven't wavered on that wow. since then. Uh, I love it. I think it allows, it allows you to help young people grow and develop and become people they never thought they could be and come outside of themselves. Uh, I think it also allows you to hold them accountable in a way that you don't get to as in, in a classroom as a teacher or you know just even in youth sports. Like I think at this level, you really get to hold someone accountable and help them grow from that um, and take them out of their comfort zone. So I love that part. Um, I, I think that's what makes coaching so unique. It's just a very rare area in which you get to do that with young people. So we're catching up with head coach for Columbia Basin women's basketball, Amy Sakaitis. And Amy, you said that you knew that you wanted to coach at the junior college level. And it's it's just really interesting. And you, it's funny, looking from the outside, people think that people want to climb the ladder, right? Same in a lot of different industries. So they're, they're wanting to get better, but just answer that a little deeper for me. Uh, you know, my dad did this for almost 40 years, and I think I learned a lot from that. Uh, not necessarily wanting to chase every next job, but find a job that can be home. Now, if you know CBC was not the right fit, if I got here and I was like, yeah, this isn't it, then I might not feel that way. Uh, but we are incredibly supported here, and I, I get to work with you know student athletes, not just mine, but the men's team and the women's soccer team, and you know other people that the volleyball team that I get to know and be around and kind of watch and follow their journey. So that part's really fun. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is that that development piece is I, you know you get to go recruit a player that maybe someone wasn't willing to take a chance on, and you get to help them grow and get to the next level, and that's really rewarding. You know, at a four-year unless you're at the top division ones when they graduate they're done playing and you know there's you don't get to continue to follow their playing career and so what's cool about here is we get to do that we get to graduate players and move them on to the next level and continue to watch their career and see them be successful we'll hear from our sponsors real quick when we come back we'll continue catching up with head coach for cbc women's basketball amy sakaitis you're listening to 1340 espn your tri-cities leader in sports Fiore Financial, LLC, helping solve financial puzzles. From proactive financial strategies, retirement planning, income generation strategies, asset protection to life insurance products, Fiore Financial can help. My name is Jeanette Fiore. Life has many twists and turns. I help business owners and professionals be strategic and intentional when building and protecting their wealth. I help solve financial puzzles. Let Fiore Financial, LLC, assist you in your financial goals. Give us a call at 509-528-7097 for a complimentary 30-minute consultation or visit us at FioriFinancial.net. Hey, if you have hard water, then you need soft water specialists. With their new Symphony system, you'll get great tasting, healthier water that will leave your clothing softer and brighter, your dishes cleaner, and it will extend the life of your appliances. With more than 30 years combined experience treating residential and commercial hard water problems, soft water specialists offers peace of mind. To transform your water from H2O no to H2O yeah, call soft water specialists for a free consultation or visit mysoftwater.com today. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Have Christine Connolly help you achieve your housing goals and be your genie in a bottle. As you wish, buying or selling a home is a huge decision. You need someone that you trust and trust that they know what they're doing. As a second generation realtor, I know how to anticipate the needs of my clients. And I make sure I'm up to date on the latest real estate trends in the Valley, along with buying programs that clients can take advantage of. I go above and beyond for all of my clients. Contact Christine Connolly online or on Facebook at As You Wish Houses. Part of Coldwell Bank. Anchor Tomlinson. You're listening to Jamie Council on the Sports Council. We're back on the Sports Council catching up with Amy Sakaitis, head coach for Columbia Basin Women's Basketball. And Amy, love being at the junior college level. And you said that you came here sight unseen 
was this already built when you came here, the fishbowl here over at CBC? It was not. So my first year coaching, I coached in the old gym. Uh, when I first came to campus, I'd already accepted the job. I was coming down to look for a place to live and uh, saw the renderings in the hallways and all the really cool graphics. And I was like, wow, that's where we're going. <laughs> so uh, it was very exciting to see that. And my dad keeps saying everywhere I go, I coach in a better gym than he did. <laughs> and so uh, and my last job, I had a great place as well. But this is pretty spectacular. I mean, what we get to provide our student athletes is pretty cool. And it's not something you see at most places. Yeah, and for those listening that maybe haven't had a chance to check out Columbia Basin College, uh, what's the highlight? What, what, what do you come here and just go, wow? The gym. Uh, you know, the weight room is great. The locker rooms are awesome. We have our own, and that's a really cool thing that you don't get most places. But at the end of the day, if you're a hooper, you're into the gym, and it's it's fantastic. It's big. It's bright. You get sun, you get sunlight in the middle of the day. Um, we have access to it all the time, which is great for our athletes. And, and at the end of the day, if you want to play, this is the place to be. And I think that some of the shading on there took place because it was a little bit too bright sometimes. I think when I was here, I forget what event it was for. The sun was coming in and blinding me and with it blinding the players <laughs> yeah we had to update some of those things there was we, architectural questions there like this is going to be great and we we're like we can't see <laughs> um, but yeah right now it's it's fantastic and they put they put blinds up on the sides um, I will say my other favorite thing is my old office did not have a window and I have a window in my office now which people don't realize is really good for your life <laughs> <laughs> Moving up in the world in multiple yes, ways. Yes. So CBC is the home to the 2024 NWAC Basketball Championships that started yesterday and championships next weekend. So uh, how does it feel just to have that event here in the Tri-Cities? I think it's great for the Tri-Cities. I think often you know people don't really know where we are and so we're bringing people from all over the state of washington parts of oregon idaho um, and really kind of getting into our area and our home and it's it's beautiful here so it's spring is a great time of year um, for people to be coming over here warm up a little bit get out of the rain hopefully so that part's really nice um, and i just think also you know being able to play at home is always a really good thing for your team sleep in your own beds eat home cooked meals all those types of things. You held the t event last year here at CBC. So what did you hear when people are checking out the gym for the first time? Lots of oohs and ahs. Um, I, I like to lovingly call it the Taj Mahal. Uh, and, and people think that's great because that's how they feel when they walk in here. And, and for us, it becomes an every day, but we try never to take that for granted and really remember that this is pretty special. Not everybody gets to play in a gym like this every day. Not everybody gets the support that we get. And so making sure that we check in on that, not just as a staff, but with our players as well. So yeah, amazing facilities, and it's Holden Court, named after Cheryl Holden. Um, uh, she was at the tournament last year. What kind of relationship or what kind of conversations have you guys had? Oh, Cheryl's an absolute legend. Uh, I get some good stories from her. Uh, one of her former players is helping us out right now. And so we, we like to stay in touch with those types of things. But she's great. She watches most of our games when we're home. She's here as much as she can be. Sometimes I get a little note sheet afterwards of things that she saw. <laughs> uh, but I love it and I appreciate it uh, to have somebody with just that experience kind of in my corner to ask questions to and get advice from is 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 rare I think and special and, and helps me a lot. And for those that don't know, who is Cheryl Holden? Cheryl Holden is the legendary CBC coach who won four NWAC championships here. And uh, you'll be looking for an NWAC championship of your own this tournament. What, what does that look like for you? You guys uh, dropped in the semifinals last year and that was kind of a tough pill to swallow. It was a tough pill to swallow, but maybe one we needed. Um, you know, no one ever wants to lose, certainly not when you're that close to it. But I thought last year we were really the team that came out of nowhere and, and you know, played really well, had really good chemistry, but we weren't expected to do anything. And so this year, I think it's a little bit different. We are expected to have some success at this tournament. I mean, we're going to go into the first round against a really, really good South team in Portland. And, you know, they played barn burners all year and we haven't. And so making sure we're ready for that is, is a little nerve wracking. But I think we've got great players. And like I said, that chemistry only carried over from last year. So we have a really good group on the court not not just talent wise but how they take care of each other and keep each other focused and pick each other up so i think that will go a long way for us 
So it's the beginning of the 2024 NWAC tournament. We're catching up with head coach Amy Sakaitis. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the players that people can watch throughout the tournament. But first, we're going to hear from our sponsors that make this show possible. You're listening to the Sports Council on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. If you've got a winery, brewery, or dairy, why buy industrial parts and supplies from across the country? Central Industrial Sales is your local source for supplies and equipment for the dairy, food processing, winery, and brewing industries. We specialize in custom fabrication, industrial cleaning equipment, sanitary fittings, valves, pumps, chemicals, and many other supplies. Everything's available through our website, by phone, or by dropping by our office. Call 509-375-4032 or find us at centralindustrialsales.com. Hey, if you have hard water, then you need soft water specialists. With their new Symphony system, you'll get great tasting, healthier water that will leave your clothing softer and brighter, your dishes cleaner, and it will extend the life of your appliances. With more than 30 years combined experience treating residential and commercial hard water problems, soft water specialists offers peace of mind. To transform your water from H2O no to H2O yeah, call soft water specialists for a free consultation or visit mysoftwater.com today. Fiore Financial, LLC, helping solve financial puzzles. From proactive financial strategies, retirement planning, income generation strategies, asset protection to life insurance products, Fiore Financial can help. My name is Jeanette Fiore. Life has many twists and turns. I help business owners and professionals be strategic and intentional when building and protecting their wealth. I help solve financial puzzles. Let Fiore Financial, LLC, assist you in your financial goals. Give us a call at 509-528-7097 for a complimentary 30-minute consultation or visit us at FioriFinancial.net. Have Christine Connolly help you achieve your housing goals and be your genie in a bottle. As you wish. Buying or selling a home is a huge decision. You need someone that you trust and trust that they know what they're doing. As a second generation realtor, I know how to anticipate the needs of my clients. And I make sure I'm up to date on the latest real estate trends in the Valley, along with buying programs that clients can take advantage of. I go above and beyond for all of my clients. Contact Christine Connolly online or on Facebook at As You Wish Houses. Part of Coldwell Banker. Tomlinson. You're listening to Jamie Council on the Sports Council. We're back catching up with Amy Sakaitis, head coach for CBC Women's Basketball, and it's tournament time. You guys have had a great season, conference champions, but now it's when it all goes on the line. So How are you guys approaching? We just talked about that not where you wanted to be last year, losing in the semifinals. So how do you guys enter the tournament? I think the biggest thing is March doesn't care. March does not care what we did in January or February. And so remembering that, um, we're preparing right now. We're working every day to make sure our offense is cleaned up. Defensively, we're rotating the right way talking, getting the rest where we need to, um, just the little X's and O's things. But the other side of that is all those those internal checkpoints, making sure mentally we're in a good place, making sure that players know their role and they feel like they have, they have an important part on the team and keeping them locked into that. So that's where we're at right now, just kind of going into the weekend, making sure we're ready to rock, rock on Saturday. And uh, MVP for the East, Trinity Nichols. Um, talk about what she brings to this team. Trinity's a special player. Um, I I think she makes us really hard to press, first of all. So we want to play fast. And if you can't press us, you can't slow us down. And she's an absolute jet. So she makes that difficult for people. Um, but she's also a winner. I mean, she she's put the team on her back a couple times and just made sure that we made the big play when it was necessary. The, you know, that being said, she gets a lot of help from her teammates too. And so it's really nice to see them kind of round each other out like that. Um, but in terms of just willing to put it on her shoulders and willing to take the pressure. Trinity takes a lot of that, and I think she gets it from me on the daily. So <laughs> so come game time, I think she's mostly ready. Um, but I try to keep that pressure on throughout the year for her. You did say she has a lot of help, and you guys are full of talent. You wouldn't be where you are as a team without that. Um, and last year, it was kind of the, the big two that mm-hmm. came in as freshmen were Trinity Nichols as well as Lexi Heath. I feel like they're kind of the big one-two punch. Mm-hmm the face of uh, the Hawks? They're a tough backcourt. I mean, a lot of people have one really good defender. 
uh, stopping both of them has turned out to be difficult for most. And, and, and I mean, we don't stop them in practice. You know, it's, it's hard to guard both of them uh, in the open floor. Lexi likes to get out on the wing and hit knock down threes. But we were saying cause she can also put you on skates with the bounce. So that's always tough for people. Um, and both have just emerged into be, being much better defenders for us this year. So that's made a big impact. And uh, talk about the style of play that people can expect when they come and watch the Hawks. Well, hopefully we're going to shoot 70, 75 shots a game. So uh, we try to play fast. We want to pressure you. Uh, we have a couple different presses that we run, and we move the ball quick. Uh, and to some degree, we want we run a bit of an equal opportunity offense nowadays. We didn't always do that, but our post players have really emerged to be strong scorers, and so that allows us to move the ball, get it inside, uh, kick it out a little bit. But a lot of motion, um, playing really fast. Like I said, we're not going to come down and set up a set every possession. Um, we only have like three of them, I think. Um, so we really just try to play the game in open space. And we already talked about Nichols and Heath. Um, tell me about some of the other players that make you guys move. Yeah, I, I think Erin Morgan is the best five player in the East region. Uh, she's unreal to me. Uh, played, I think, nine minutes a game last year and now is playing 30 something a game for us, averaging 15 points a game in conference play. And is just a beast inside. I mean, she can go left, she can go right. Uh, has really worked on her game, but where she's special and I think where people struggle is her and Trinity get out on the open floor and she probably gets six to eight points and just transition buckets a game. And so I think that's, that's a challenge for most people's five player to defend. Uh, and then Kenzie Peterson plays our four spot and Kenz is crafty inside. She's undersized, um, probably our best defender, uh, which is on the all defensive team this year for us. And, and probably our best defender picks up the top of our press, really long athletic, you know, kind of makes you uncomfortable. Uh, and then the player I think that gets kind of forgot a lot is Michaela Robertson. She started some, sometimes she comes off the bench. Uh, she'll start again this weekend for us, but she's just steady. She rebounds, she has her hands up on defense, she scores when she's supposed to, but she's really the one that helps us run our offense and keep things in flow. And then, you know, after that, we just have a great group on the bench. I mean, we, I think we bring a lot of firepower off the bench. Yeah. We looked at a box score the other day, and it was, I think we scored 25 points off the bench. Anaya yeah. Heaven, she oh, yeah. absolutely exploded in a game. Yeah. And I and was like, that's fun to watch because people around here are, are probably listening on the radio mm -hmm. and thinking, I know that name. I know that name. And, and that's because she was a Riverhawk right here in Pasco. That's right. And people, and it's fun. Like, you know, Anaya can have a big night. Jayana Keister can come off the bench for a really big night uh, you know Skyland Munson had a big night a couple weeks ago and so we just have different areas that we can hurt people um, you know Emma Ashley is one of our best defenders and like Bailey comes off and hits big threes for us late in games and so I think what's important is that they kind of all know each other's strengths and they play to those and that that's been really fun to coach for us and uh, sweet 16 then elite eight this week and then uh, final four and the championships next week. Fingers crossed. Yeah, we have a lot of work to do before we worry about next weekend, but uh, really excited about kind of going into this first game and, and having a good challenge. I mean, I always, you know, everyone has asked me, hey, Mad, do you guys have to play the South first? And I'm like, no, I want to play someone that can give us a game. You know, it's the teams that can't give you a game where you don't play well against. So I'd like to play someone I think is going to be competitive and prepared and, and, you know, make sure we take care of business. Well, best of luck to you. Thank you. The Hawks open play noon on Saturday, facing the fourth seed from the South region, Portland. If they win Saturday, Columbia Basin is back in action Sunday at 2 o'clock, where they will face the winner between Green River and Shoreline, fighting for a spot in the semifinals next weekend. For more information on the tournament, both men and women, go to nwacsports.com. Well, that wraps up this week's show of the Sports Council. Thank you for joining me on 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. A reminder, the Sports Council happens four times a month, 1130 a.m. on Thursdays. But you can listen to the show not just over the airwaves at 1130 on Thursdays, but also on demand at 1340 ESPNradio.com via podcast, wherever you get your podcasts, just search for the Sports Council. And it's also available via YouTube. So lots of ways to listen to the Sports Council and support our local sports community. I'm Jamie Council. Thanks for joining me.
You're listening to 1340 ESPN, your Tri-Cities leader in sports. Now we go back to your originally scheduled Seattle sports programming.